Hey guys, Black Omen here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, we got a uh, huge whopper of an update about the the next Ruby book that is coming out in September. Uh, as you know, the first two books, uh, After the Fall, Before the Dawn, uh, surround the events around Team Coffee, and then the second book around Team Sun and Team Coffee. But this third book uh, doesn't involve either one of them. And for for the for a few for for a while we actually didn't have a title we didn't have a picture but late last night we got uh, we got both actually um, the the title of this book is called Roman Holiday now as you can see the the cover features both Roman and Neo so. If I had a guess, we're going to get the long-awaited backstory around Neo and Torchwick that we've all been wondering for years. And thankfully, thankfully, we don't have to wait too much longer. Um, now, my guess is that uh, Rooster Teeth and members of Kruby was hoping that this information would stay undercover because they probably were waiting to reveal this during RTX at home. But unfortunately, somebody at, uh, at Amazon, thank you Jeff Bezos, um, leaked the information about you know the upcoming book because there are people, including myself, uh, who pre-ordered the, the book without knowing the title or a picture or anything. And we see that the you know this this book was uh, was supposed to be have more information released at RTX and now that it leaked out to the public, uh, my guess is that they're probably not that happy about it. But you know what? I do hope that they reveal some uh, some juicy information, maybe little tidbits about uh, maybe plot or you know certain information that we might find out in this book. Um, but before I get into some of the uh, questions and speculations that I have in this book, um, I want to take a look at some little, uh, take a look at the cover. And there are certain things in this cover that I kind of want to point out to some of you who, ha who didn't, uh, may, have, may have not noticed this the first time around. Um, this first, the first picture here, uh, if you zoom in on it, you can see that it's a family photo of a man, a woman, and a child. Now, I'm assuming that is most likely that is probably Neo's mother and father, and that's probably her in the picture. At first glance, I thought that maybe like everyone in the picture would just look, you know, very uh, not very smiley, because from the looks of it, it looks like they're um, everyone's dressed up. They're wearing nice clothes, which is all great. But it kind of looks like that maybe the uh, the mother is maybe smiling. I can't really tell because I just zoomed in on it. Uh, presumably the, the little girl, I'm, if I had to guess, it's probably Neo. Um, just by going from what I see in the picture, my guess is that Neo comes from a family that is very well-to-do. You know, very, uh, very upscale. You know, not like a... Uh, a trailer park trashy kind of family but they, they look like they wear fancy clothes um, one thing I did notice that I thought was kind of interesting was that in in the picture uh, especially with the mother there's uh, a lot of a uh, theme around the color with white and pink because you know that is Neo's color is like white pink or brown because obviously her name is Neapolitan you know that's like the ice cream but uh, I thought it was kind of interesting, a nice little touch there. The just the color schemes in the in the family photo. Uh, now the other thing that I want to point out, move over. Uh, you can see the the crest or the symbol for for Vale, the Kingdom of Vale. So if I had to put two and two together here, I, I would have to say that Neo and her family are from the Kingdom of Vale which uh, is pretty cool. Uh, I mean, 
we don't we, we didn't really gather any information about where Neo came from during uh, her her appearance on the show or in the beginning at any point. We know nothing about her other than the fact that uh, she was uh, I guess had some sort of a relationship with Roman Torchwick and what we gathered was that the the relationship was kind of a platonic uh, family kind of dynamic not in a romantic kind of way but kind of more of a uh, like a brother sister or maybe like a uh, like a father daughter kind of dynamic you know because you know Roman is older so it kind of saw her, like we kind of just assumed that Neo saw Torchwick as the, like an older brother, father figure, you know, that kind of thing. Because we don't know where she came from, what her family is like, but uh, I'm hoping that this book answers some of those questions. Now, as for what I would like to, to see in, in this book, well, I have a few questions that are... Uh, that I've been I've, I've been wondering for the longest time. So, uh, one question, uh, first question, is why did, why can't Neo speak? Why why is she why is she unable to speak? Is it is it some traumatic event that happened to her? Is it psychological? Um, do we do we not know? Was she born this way? Was it you know because of some traumatic event and it just Create or warped her in such a way that she can't physically speak. Uh, was this something that she may have misbehaved as a child and like took her vocal cords out? We don't know. That is messed up, but we don't know. Uh, that that is like the the number one question that I've had for years about Neo. Um, uh, another question I have is um, how did Torchwick and Neo meet? That that is a that is uh, probably another big question. Uh, whether I think uh, that maybe Neo ran away from her family, didn't like the family lifestyle that she had. Maybe she ran away, and upon being homeless, maybe Torchwick, you know, uh, came up upon her, or she approached him looking for some kind of family, and you know, he kind of embraced her, and you know, took took her under his wing as like a, I guess maybe started out as someone like a protege, and then as they got closer, came more of a, a family dynamic. Uh, another question I have is, what, um, what was, uh, you know, Roman and Neo's upbringing like, you know? Because was Torchwick always like this? Was he always a troublemaker? Does he, was he like a good kid? We don't know. We, I hope I hope we find out. That would give um, a lot of depth to his character that we did not know the first time around. Uh, I have to say, this is going to be uh, a... We're going to learn a lot about the two of them. And I really I really do hope that we get to uh, see some something that we... Like some big re revelation. Because i got to tell you... Being that this book is about uh, these two characters, and they're and especially with Neo, Neo is very popular, and you know there's a lot of mystery surrounding her. I do hope that, because I, I can tell you right now that this book is going to drive up a lot of hype, and I hope the hype lives up, because I got to tell you, people are going to be disappointed if they don't get a lot of the burning questions out of the way. Now. One thing I would like to see, because um, I know this is going to be inevitably going to be an audio book, because the first two, uh, there are audio versions of the book released that you can download and listen to. Uh, I would kind of be rather interested, being that this book is going to be about both Neo and Torchwick, um, I would like for the, uh, the voice actor, I believe the name is Grey Haddock, uh, who voiced Torchwick. It would be nice to have him do the narration for, for this upcoming book I think when it comes to being released audio. Uh, so, you know, because I, as much as I enjoy uh, listening to Shannon McCormick do uh, Osborne's voice and reading, you know, the, reading the book um, in the audio versions, it would be kind of nice 
just to have uh, the, the voice of Roman Torchwick narrating the story, being that it surrounds him and Neo. Uh, you know, a little fun fact for those who, uh, who don't know or may not remember, uh, originally uh, Neo was going to be voiced, or at least Monty wanted uh, the voice of, of Neo to be done by comedian uh, Sarah Silverman. Uh, she unfortunately uh, turned down the, the job, and I guess Monty was like, rather than uh, trying to find someone to do the voice, he just decided to make her a a non-speaking character. And and I think I think that having that that little thing about her uh, actually makes it better, because I think at this point. Uh, I mean, there, there is a reality out there somewhere where uh, Neo is being voiced by Sarah Silverman and it's, you know the show has been going on for eight, nine years and who knows what would have happened if Neo had a voice. Uh, but now I think at this point, I don't think anyone would want to have a, a voice for her, but you know, that's just me. But I would like to find out, I hope this book tells you and find out what happened. You know, as I said, could have been traumatic, could have been psychological, could have been born with a problem speaking, we don't know. But, uh, another thing, one last thing, one last thing, one last question I have, uh, is that after, uh, well, before, you know, torture was eaten by the, by the Grimm in Volume 3, we see, um, Ruby press the, the button on, on Neo's Umbrella causing her, you know, causing it to open and she flies away. I'm wondering, maybe in this book we find out what happened to Neo in that time. Because Neo is absent from, from uh, Volume 4 to part of Volume 6. And I'm kind of curious as to what happened to her. Does she go back to her family? Is her family dead at this point? Like, where does she go? Possibilities are endless. Um, thank you all for watching. Uh, what are some questions that you guys have that want to be answered in this book? Uh, what are some things that you guys want to or expect to see happen in this book? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe as well. I, I always love more subscribers, and the more I get, the more fun I have, the more often I can do these videos. Uh, don't forget to follow me on the Twitter machine at BlackOmen10, and I will see you all in the next one.